guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody all right guys let's start with our first question and the time starts now here are the questions you've seen the first slide here are the questions uh, if you get more time i think you'll be more elaborate in your answers do one very important thing like i always tell you guys now this is the tip take, take the tip of oski for the day the tip is that you take a play page in which you're supposed to write on the answer and answer this is like for example answer one ka one okay you wrote down oh it is now you don't you know that there's nothing more that you have to add here okay but two and three these are things in which you might if you get time towards the end you might have to scribble a little bit more so when you're writing down mild moderate severe mild moderate severe and critical uh, leave more space for each okay and just two two important salient points finish off and go and do the third question third question do complete Mention any five risk factors for this condition. By that, it's all the five risk factors. Then you still have time. Go and scribble down in your mild, moderate, severe, and critical category, which is obvious, which is bound to happen. You will not be able to divide exact time for all the answers because they are not very uh, well balanced questions in the first place. First question, what is your diagnosis? Is just a one word answer. But the second one is like almost a paragraph answer. Three is again five words answer. So you have to give more time for the second one. How will you do that? By doing the first and third. immediately for our fight and coming back to the second one that's how you'll be able to do justice okay guys so where are the others who are you writing down are you guys writing not writing typing i have not yet received your answers and so my answers are here what's your diagnosis yes it is ohss then it is um, the second question severity classification so here is severity classification i'll start with the critical one the critical is the most dangerous because she's circling the brain over here Ten societies, hypoxia, mostly pleural effusion, all problems, DIC, uh, you know your uh, respiratory distress, everything happens. Even renal failure, they happen over here. From thromboembolic events, all these problems they happen over here. As a result of which, critical OHS is the worst OHSs. Then severe OHS, severe OHS is massive ascites, hydrothorax, oligouria, and serum electrolyte uh, imbalances. Okay, hematocritin severe is around more than forty-five percent, and here it is more than fifty-five percent. So it's far more dangerous. Moderate and mild, one or two lines, I'm okay with. I, we probably see more on severe and critical. Moderate one is like you'll get to know the sites, but only through ultrasound evidence. And uh, WBC can't be more than ten thousand, but you'll be able to uh, have moderate pain. Not clinically evident sites. Clinically evident sites is there in severe. Over here, you might have some. Uh, you know, uh, evidence of a site is through ultrasound, not through your any clinical palpation or percussion. Moving on to mild OHSs, yes, you will have abdominal pain, mild pain, and ovarian size will be always less than eight centimeters. So this is what happens with most of the patients. Mild to moderate OHSs is there in most of the patients. Okay, all right. So this was it. Then five risk factors for this condition. You know that PCOS is a huge risk factor. low body mass index the first time being thin is you know troublesome low body mass index is high problem high amh levels is again associated with pcos multiple intermediate size follicles and high recruitment when you recruiting the follicles suddenly you had a very hyper surge of follicles so hyper uh, multiple uh, you know recruitment of follicles and high serum estradiol pre trigger so it's better if you don't give a trigger but pre trigger high serum estradiol usually leads to OHS. All right, guys. Very well done, Roslyn. Very well done. Uh, very proud of you. And uh, who is this? Sorry. Okay, Anita. Okay, you also very well done. So it's good that you scribble it down and you take a picture. That was also totally, totally accepted. Next, next question.
scan which is being shown in the above depicted images is the scan that you always routinely do, which is a level two scan. Okay, so there's no big question there. Mention five common soft markers. There are multiple, which you should know by now. There are certain people who are even mentioning the soft markers which he's been seeing. Okay, and um, what is exit procedure? Mention three indications for the procedure. I have taught my uh, you know this uh, exit procedure in my fetal therapy classes elaborately. Everyone who has my theory course already knows this and has been through the uh, immense uh, uh, videos that I've posted and specific post, uh, you know, this uh, videos for difficult topics like this. So exit procedure is also there and it's very well spoken of. All right, let me just start with the answers. Very well done. So we have Rosalind, we have uh, Anita. Are you there? And we have one more, I don't know your name, I'm sorry. Charu is there, all right. Okay, so people are answering very well done and you please keep doing. The answers do not stop just because I have given you the answers already. Uh, we're almost done with the five minutes now. So I'm giving you the answers. The scan is level two scan. The for uh, soft markers will be nuclear fold thickness, which you want to see. Echogenic intracardiac focus. Very well done. Very well done. Just a minute. There's a couple of requests. Okay. Very good. Very well done. Now it feels like some energy in the class. Very well done. Okay, Charu, Anita, very good. Then we have uh, Nivedita, very well. I was waiting for you. Great. All of you have done very well. So common uh, common soft markers and nuclear fold thickness, which has to be increased, ecogenic intracardiac focus, which many of you have written. Ecogenic. When it comes to ecogenic, ecogenic cardiac focus and ecogenic bowel, they are soft markers. Any nuclear fold thickness which is increased at that point in time. Short femur, short humerus, single umbilical artery, another very important soft marker, which is associated with many problems. So yes, you will see all these soft markers, which is generally seen. Moving on. What is exit procedure? The utero intrapartum therapy. What you do is basically you somehow manage this baby half and half out. Maybe uh, remove a tumor or intubate the baby or uh, you know give her excessive support system from outside and then deliver her usually done for mostly of those cases in which the respiratory tract is either blocked or there is an issue with the uh, respiration of the baby so you intubate the baby put them on the ventilator or um, you know external uh, uh, this thing airway or external uh, uh, ventilator of the uh, this thing um, ventilatory uh, uh, instrument and then you deliver out the baby so it is one is chaos one is cystic hygroma. One is congenital diaphragmatic hernia. It will be very difficult for baby to breathe on its own outside or thoracic masses. So usually associated with the lung and complication of breathing at birth. So you give either artificial respiration or you give put the intubate the uh, baby, uh, secure the airway, and then deliver out the baby so that the baby can be saved. And it's not exactly completely ex utero procedure. It's an ex utero intrapartum therapy. So that means the baby is not yet completely delivered. It's still being, uh, you know, suffused by the placental flow. But somehow we are managing the baby, or we are putting or doing an operation on the baby. All right, guys. So that was it. That was all that you had to write down. And the next question starts here. You see this and then I have questions for you. Seen everyone? And I'll just, just give me a minute guys. So I'll just copy this for you. So that you can see it here as well. Endometriosis fertility index. I've taken a complete lecture. It's there on the YouTube also with a lot of views. So if my students don't know about EFI complete, I am not very happy with this. Uh, Jitu, are you there in the class? And if you can just put that video on EFI on the group right now so that they can go through the CFI. Wow, very good. Very good, Ashi, Charu. Who's there more than that? Okay, Devedita, great. And this is Ashi, all right. 
Very well done. Wow, Ashi, great. Beautiful answer. All right. So what's your diagnosis, guys? Come on, that's a no-brainer. It's a digestive for adenomyosis and just some few requests, guys. So the problem is that there are people who are coming and entering the group with their different names. So it's okay, I've asked you to enter anonymous, that's fine. But you can uh, keep such such name if you do not want to share it with other other friends of yours or your colleagues or seniors or whatever that you're there in my group, that's fine. But at least keep a genuine name. Now, keeping things like, you know, devil and uh, anonymous and unviable, I say yes to, you know. So I'm sorry, but I'll not be able to take that request. All right, going ahead. What's your diagnosis? Yes, it's a no-brainer adenomyosis. Going on to the ultrasound criteria for diagnosing this condition. Come on, that's MOSA criteria. And this is what she's given us, the chart on MOSA. Okay, and this, if you should know, because this alone as a question can be asked, has been asked, and has a very great potential in being asked. If there is anything in adenomyosis that you really need to know, which is different from everything else, is this idea, this thing, um, the ultrasound criteria these days, because based on which we can say, yes, this patient is having adenomyosis and usually is along with fibro, uh, fibroid uterus or endometriosis. What's the plan of uh, scar endometriosis? Well, the medical management is there. You have either you can go for, oh, scar endometriosis, not scar ectopic, all right. So di dinogest is there, you can give, so it's just this, you, your endometriotic management, okay? It could be Danages, it could be Genaro Chagones, it could be surgical management if you want to do a scar excision, but usually not done. You have a lot of management over here, even apart from progestogens. So you have SPRMs, you have SERM, okay? Then you have uh, your agents like um, uliprostyl acetate, right? So anything that goes on for... Uh, not exactly, but I think um, uh, Mifepriston can still be used. So some of them can be used. Some of them be better is to, is to go for dinogens. These Mifepriston are not a more significant for fibroid than they are for uh, endometriosis, but you can still name them. Of course, apart from that, you have OCPs and you have uh, um, DNRH agonists, which I've already written down. All right. Now, moving on to the EFI, endometriosis uh, fertility index. So you have all these as your, wait a second, I'll just increase this. Um, you know, these uh, measures are there for uh, managing the endometriotic uh, fertility index. So what you basically see in that is, first of all, the score at uh, for the fallopian tube, how the fimbri, how the ovaries are. And what you basically see in all this is uh, amount of adhesions, amount of... Uh, flimsy as well as um, the uh, dense adhesions. This is what you mostly see in the EFI. And what exactly is it telling you? It is telling you the score so that we know how much this patient has the capacity of uh, getting pregnant. So that means inside, if she's got uh, more of adhesions, more of, uh, you know, uh, uh, scarring and less of patency, then in that case, she will not be having a good score. So, this is how the score is ma managed, plus her, all these other factors which are uh, in, in case of history, which are important, which will corroborate to it. So first of all, you have surgical score and then you have a historical score. So not just the surgical alone, but the historical, that means what is her age, what her, how many years has she been uh, infertile and with whether she's had any previous pregnancy or not. So in the surgery, we are basically understanding what is a basic dysfunction with the regard to her uh, tubal function, with regard to her additions, with regard to her fertility uh, index. And also history becomes important and together we manage this score. Please go through this, this video of mine. Uh, Jitu, please, can you be kind enough to just put that video on my... Um, uh, this uh, channel right now so that everyone goes through it's a very short video like i love to make small small videos so that you can revise faster and then just go through it and you'll be able to understand efi score next question 